Well, I'm excited to be joined by author and researcher Hugh Newman. Uh, today, Hugh has written several books, such as Stone Circles, uh, Megalithic Studies in Stones, and Giants on Record, among others. Uh, he is CEO of Megalithomania, where he hosts uh, various conferences and tours and produces really countless videos regarding ancient megalithic sites on the Megalithomania YouTube channel. So make sure and subscribe there. Hugh, thanks so much uh, for joining me today. Yes, yeah, thanks for having me on, Dee. I appreciate it. I want to talk with you about uh, Palenque, the site, and Lord Pakal in a minute. Uh, but before we get to that, what fascinates you most about the Maya civilization? The Maya are absolutely... I've, I've really got into them. I mean, I first came to Mexico a long time. I came back... I think the first time I came was 2003. And, uh, and I became obsessed by the Maya back then. I was in Tulum, all over Mexico, Palenque, and other places. Um, and I came. I've been a few times since, and I got. But I got drawn into the Olmec and the Teotihuacan kind of cultures. Currently, we're really researching the Mayan sites around the Yucatan, also down in um, uh, Campeche, uh, Tabasco. Uh, there's, I mean, there's Mayan sites just around Mexico City as well, uh, Puebla, Oaxaca, and other places. And the way they, they may have been influenced by the Olmecs, but they took what the Olmecs did to a whole different level when it comes to building and construction, because people don't realize there's a megalithic thing going on with the, with the Mayans. But, you know, we, we've found it at a few sites. I've seen it at Tiahuatacan, I've seen it at Palenque, I've seen it at the site of down in Calakmul, in the Rio Beck area, uh, Izamal, which is a huge pyramid um, between Merida and Chichen Itza. No one knows about it. It's one of the biggest, it's the second biggest pyramid in Mexico, next to Cholula. It's giant. It takes over the whole town. And no one talks about it. And we went there and we were like, whoa. And it's all megalithic foundations. Um, and so there's a different thing with the Maya people don't realize. They also built these roads, these dead straight roads, called white roads or sackbees between sites. Some of them going on for 100 miles. Uh, and they were raised roads. You could, you know, perfect. They were sacred kind of pathways, like ley lines marking the landscape. So there's so much going on with the Maya. It's just, and with JJ here, she is just an expert on all the symbolism. So she's showing me all these things that, you sort of see it from a whole new perspective. You kind of get into the mindset of the Maya. And also the Maya may be older than people realize. They may go back parallel in the Yucatan area, Yucatan Peninsula, all the state, all the area here. They may have been parallel with the Olmecs to probably like 14, 1200 BC. Because there's evidence in some of these sites that goes back to at least 1000 BC. And people don't realize that either, that they're actually pushing the dates back as more discoveries are found. There's this huge site, I forget the name of it, down um, towards Palenque, these mega platforms they found with LIDAR scans. And they've gone dating on some of that, and that goes back to 1200 BC or something. And so the dates are getting pushed back with the Maya. And what we're finding at a lot of the sites, the lowest levels, was almost the stuff buried in the ground, and some of the stelae were megaliths. They were megaliths, but then they got reused by the Maya and other cultures. Um, and you can you can sort of get a sense of that. Some of these sites, where they're so big, they would have almost they could have even been stone circles, or stone avenues, and things like this. Um, and and yeah, so I think there's there's other elements and older elements to the Maya that people realise, but they really took the astronomy and uh, the pyramid construction to a whole other, another level. I really enjoyed uh, your video. I think you posted it last year regarding your trip to Palenque. Uh, so can you tell our audience about this amazing site, especially anything relating to Lord Pakal? Because there's so much intrigue regarding this character. Uh, so tell us about that site, what you saw, the most amazing parts about it. Yeah, yeah. the Palenque is a really cool site. It's, kind of, it's actually an Olmec land, really. It's in a Tabasco state. Um, it's not far from Villa Hermos, maybe two hours um, south of there. And so you're kind of in Olmec territory when you go to Palenque. So it's a, it's a great place to hang out. Um, Palenque is a cool little town. Uh, not much of it has been excavated, very little, in fact, about 5 to 10%. And 
it is what is what is excavated is remarkable and we have um, the temple of inscriptions where lord pakal was found he's an interesting character he ruled all his life like for like 50 odd years or more um in the six seven hundreds ad um and he was super influential he was like a genius he developed he developed the whole place to a whole other, another level some of the early excavators back in the 50s believed he was a giant when they found his sarcophagus which is it's unique his sarcophagus not just the lid it's the actual sarcophagus itself is a giant megalithic block beautifully carved out with the lid on it as well um and he was super tall and seven to nine feet tall some people suggest now there's one of one of the early accounts from one of the uh, excavators who was a local you know he's involved in it said that's what he saw and he, and he kind of worked out that's how much tall he must have been um whether whether he was we don't know but what we do know is that he had an elongated skull and so did the red queen she was in the pyramid next door uh, she was discovered in a beautiful sarcophagus there as well she also had an elongation of the skull um but palenque is just one of those beautiful jungle located sites which is is absolutely stunning and you got you can't go in the pyramids or anything now when i when i was here in 2003 a long time ago then you could go in even in 2010 when i came here i couldn't go in so i actually went inside the pyramid and saw parts of the original tomb way back then you couldn't take any photos though unfortunately so but now they don't allow that uh, i haven't done for a long time so but yeah i mean palenque people are visiting it now it's only open until like three and you can only go you can't climb any pyramids or anything. You can't climb some when it's open fully. But yeah, pe people have got to check that. It's one of the most important sites, certainly in um, uh, in Mexico. Plus, it's got a megalithic foundation. I've, I'm going to be editing a video about that in a couple of weeks. Huge amount. If you look carefully and go to the right place, you can see the megalithic origins of that place. Because officially, it's not that old. But I think it is. I think it's much, much older than people realize. Yeah, I think you said in your video that the original settlement there of Palenque was about 100 BC, uh, and they were probably influenced by the Olmec. And then Lord Pakal ruled about, I think you said 615 to 680 yeah. AD. And then what's fascinating is uh, his tomb, I believe, was discovered in the 50s, I think, in the base of that main pyramid. And when you look at that, the tomb or the sarcophagi. I mean, this thing definitely looks megalithic. It almost looks superior than everything else around there. And tell us a little bit about the jade mask. Was he wearing that when he was found? And do we know where the skeleton is now? The skeleton, I'm not sure where that is now. But I know the mask has been reconstructed a few times. It had fallen apart when they discovered it. Um, he had other pieces on him as well, but the jade mask, they pretty much reconstructed. It's beautif beautifully done. Uh, but a similar thing on the Red Queen as well. Uh, and at Kalak Mull, you find these kind of jade masks as well. Uh, Kalak Mull was actually at war with Palenque at one point. Um, and reconstructions of that are in various museums. Uh, the, the museum at Palenque, they're not letting people in because of COVID at the moment, but you can see a good reconstruction of it there. But... Um, yeah, the, the sarcophagus thing is just—it's just odd. It's like um, it's like something you see in Egypt. It's precision carved. You know, it's not—I it's, don't even think it's limestone. I think it's a different type of limestone. It's basalt, so it's really hard to carve. And that lid is a masterpiece. I mean, it's much bigger than you realize. It's like nine feet, nine and a half feet long, or more maybe. Um, it is unbelievable. And you know, the whole ancient astronaut idea of him being like sitting in a rocket going up into space with breathing apparatus that's what it looks like you know i hate to admit it that's what it looks like it doesn't look like it's some sacred thing of him descending into the underworld he's holding some kind of device he's got his foot on pedals it's bizarre absolutely bizarre it really is it really is bizarre i mean it looks like he's in some kind of craft and again the size of the sarcophagi the the carvings on the lid what but it looks like he's doing it's it's crazy you said the original reports of the um archaeologist i believe he had it he was maybe seven to nine feet tall he had an elongated skull do you think i guess my last question about this is could pakal have been some kind of uh demigod 
hybrid type Nephilim that was, if you subscribe to that theory, was ruling these people. Um, Cause he, you said he's might have had, you know, he was like a genius level type thing. And do you think they might've had some uh, knowledge of advanced tech or still possession of some in the 600 ADs? I think they had a uh, knowledge of advanced technology back then, and it was kept within the elite circles for sure in the Royal circles. So who these people were, we just don't know. I mean, we have so much evidence with the Olmecs of international trade and movement between different countries sailing across the planet. We know that there's an Egyptian and African connection for sure. There has to be, uh, that could have influenced and spread out down, not that's not even that far away into Palenque. Um, we have, um, the area, you know, between the Gulf coast and the South coast of that thin strip of land, the Isthmus of Mexico is not that far. And there were canals in between there so at some point. So there was trade, a whole world could travel between, you know, and go through that part of the country. So it would have been a, an attractive point for international people. And some of the headdresses um, and like turban type things are very similar to what you find in the Middle East and the biblical like, Bible lands. And the, like you say, could there be a connection with these Anunnaki? Could there be a connection? With these nephilim there might well be i mean because they were certainly super advanced and uh, i know i've been reading uh, the lost realms by zachariah sitchin um and he talks about all the americas and how that that influence occurred um from that part from the middle east from that part of the world and so there could be something in there um there's not a lot of real evidence you're looking at symbols you're looking at clothing carved you know what they're wearing carved in stone things like this to try and get the information, but there are too many connections to ignore. Well, this has been a fascinating interview, uh, Hugh. Thanks so much for uh, your time today. And for those uh, listening or watching, make sure and follow Hugh. He's on Instagram uh, at Hugh Newman one man. Thanks again for your time. Keep up the great work and we'll do this again, hopefully in the future. All right. Thanks a lot. They appreciate it. Mm -hmm.